Next on the Broadway show, it's a modern day cinema classic. Now, Almost Famous the Musical is ready to rock on Broadway. You'll meet the headliners. Plus, it's a beautiful noise. I'm chatting with Tony nominee Will Swenson to talk about playing Neil Diamond on Broadway. And K-pop comes to Broadway. We're sitting down with Korean pop sensation Luna, who's set to make her Broadway debut. She's here for the latest edition of The Broadway Show. Autumn is just around the corner, but the new fall season on Broadway is here. Welcome to The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is our big fall preview. Let's get to it. Some like it rough, some like it tame. Give me a more to love the flame. Some like it hard and hot, it's what I got for you. The 1959 Hollywood classic Some Like It Hot is coming to Broadway in November. It's a sassy and brassy musical comedy from a powerhouse creative team. Tony-winning director Casey Nicola, songs from Hairspray's Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, and a book by the Tony-winning playwright of The Inheritance, Matthew Lopez, and TV funny lady Amber Ruffin. Another more recent film classic is also heading to the stage, Cameron Crowe's autobiographical road trip Almost Famous. Here's Paul Wontorek with the story. That's right, Tamsin. This new musical take on the popular film stars Casey Likes as its fresh-faced protagonist and Saleha Pfeiffer as the groupie of his dreams. I sat down with both Broadway newcomers at the Civilian Hotel. It's cool, good to see the two of you because the last time I saw both of you, you were on stage at the Old Globe Theater yes. before COVID, 2019, killing it in oh this gosh. almost famous musical that I fell in love with immediately. And I was like, get this show to Broadway. And it's finally happening. It's Just finally a little here. delay. Yes. Three years later. But you know, but right on time. I feel like like at this point, like it's, it's such a blessing to have this extra time and this extra time to be together. And now everyone is just like, we feel so ready, you know? We haven't rushed a thing. Mm -hmm. So now that we're here, I just think everyone's just so grateful that it's finally happening. And it just feels like kind of like perfect timing now. So I was actually hoping throughout the entire pandemic that you were like sleeping in some sort of chamber to make sure you stayed very youthful. <laughs> and, because I mean, you're a, you're a young guy, but you look you look fantastic. Thank you can you. still play. Thank you. Oh, you there, there were close calls. There were close. I was like, I was like, I need that cryo chamber. Of the sun. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it, being from Arizona, you're like you're like that sun will will kill me. <laughs> so yeah, no, we tried. No, you did great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's interesting to see which modern film classics people want to see adapted. I've heard fans of this movie for years and years say that is what needs to come to Broadway. Is that true? Have you also heard that and felt that? I think, I mean, it lends itself to yeah. being adapted into a musical so, so easily. I mean, it's a, it's a show about loving music. It's right. a show about a band, you know? So yeah. there's, it's just ripe with opportunities. And then having Tom Kitt. Well, that's the thing. Know? This could have easily been a jukebox musical yes. where you just take a bunch of hits and sort of frame it around the exactly. story. But what I love about it mm -hmm. is it is a mostly, there are a few classics yeah. in the mix, but mostly this amazing Tom Kitt score that honors this music, the sound of this music. My experience as an audience member was I was like, Am I listening to a classic song? Yeah. Am right. I listening to a new song? I think it's like, this is Tom Kitt's bread and butter is just like yeah. arranging songs that you already know and love and just making them that much better. And then also giving this like beautiful inner life to these characters that we've known for so long. Mm -hmm. I think that's what is so exciting for fans of the movie yeah. is that you get everything that you love about the movie. You get those songs, you get the characters, you get all of that, you get that world, but you get so much more. He just disappears into, into yeah. the project. You know, it's like yeah. he is the star Tom Kitt but he's like you know but I'm gonna serve exactly what this piece is and, yeah. and him and Cameron are almost like the counterparts to each other they're literally like yeah. the musical counterpart they like work just, together so well they you look at them and they're just a great duo they're, yeah. they're like best friends so back to Penny because yeah. yeah. she is very important and absolutely many Thank a Broadway you, diva Thank wanted you, to play Penny Lane in this musical I'm glad they got Celia Viper. As am I. Cameron Crowe is just like a master at yeah. iconography in general. Yes. But like, say anything. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, everything from Almost Famous, like there are so many, like he has created so many like phrases and, mm -hmm. and images and moments that we all know. Yeah. And so it feels like kind of like this big responsibility in uh -huh. a way and you hope that you are living up to what it is that people love about it. But like putting on that coat, putting on the, like getting to be her yeah. is one of the greatest 
greatest honors of my life. And, and it's just so fun. Like I'm just genuinely having the best time doing it. Almost Famous is obviously based on Cameron Crowe's. It's semi-autobiographical about sort of his Very. experiences as a teenage writer for Rolling Stone. This is really the first woman he's fallen in love with. She's the object of so many things in his life. Something that's so personal to me is, is the story of young love. You know, it's the story of like the most innocent version of love you can possibly feel. I mean, I think we all remember the first time we fell in love with someone. And I feel like many of us are still almost in love with them today. You know, right. like we, if we think about our first love, yeah. we think about like- It informs everything. It informs yeah. everything <laughs> after that. And it's like, what uh, an amazing person to fall in love with every night. So yeah, it's 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 easy every night, and it's I'm, I'm really glad to tell the story. The atmosphere of the show is really fun. I remember yeah. it vividly, yeah. and it was three years ago I saw the show, but it was like it's beautiful to look at, and you obviously have the iconic costume. Yes, you have the coat. Yeah. The coat is is has made it to Broadway. <laughs> the coat, has, the made coat has made it to it's Broadway. Not Yes. But, is, but it must be fun just as a cast to sort of get lost in it's all of that. the best time. It is the best time. I think it was Drew Galing who plays Jeff yeah. Baby. He was the one, he, recently he was just like, our show is just a good hang. The relevance of this show and the meaning has changed even in the past few years that it's like, this was a time, it's a, not only nostalgic for, you know, it was in the 70s, but it's nostalgic for a time when people could come together right. without fear mm -hmm. and come together without interruptions, without constant notifications. This is like, nostalgic to it to a moment in time when we were together we were together you know it takes us back to a moment in time where, where culture was changing and people are experiencing mm -hmm. freedom and new music and hearing new sounds and new modes of expression and everything and i think that's that's really cool as audiences continue to pack the house at six the musical some more radio ready broadway shows are on their way this fall And Juliet puts a new twist on the story of Romeo and Juliet. It features a whole lot of pop anthems you know and love from hit maker Max Martin. Songs like Baby One More Time, Since You've Been Gone, Roar, and so many more. Then I saw her face. Neil Diamond is a living legend, a Grammy winner who sold 120 million records. Now, the musical, based on his incredible career, comes to Broadway this fall. Speaking of pop stars, I got the chance to catch up with Tony nominee Will Swenson, who's bringing the story of an undeniable great to life every night in a beautiful noise. Let's jump in and talk about it. So. Neil Diamond. It feels like it could be daunting, but you are handling it effortlessly, it seems. <laughs> yeah, um, performing Neil Diamond as Neil Diamond in front of Neil Diamond is one of the more bizarre things I've ever done. Well, that's what I want to ask you. This has to be different from so many of the other shows, so many TV shows and um, and on Broadway, but is it, how is this one different? I mean, I, I've never played somebody who was living before and somebody that, that people know so well, like people, everybody knows his songs and his mannerisms and his sound. So to not nail it, people are gonna be like, that's wrong, I can check the YouTube and he doesn't move like that, he doesn't sound like that, so it's a little daunting. No pressure, right? Yeah, no pressure. Um, big fan of Neil Diamond? Huge. Yeah? Yeah, no, legit. My dad's favorite singer of all time. Oh, wow. Uh, just was on a loop in our house growing up. There was, uh, we had a, an autographed picture of Neil Diamond hanging in our garage, so it was just like in my bones before I even started. Wow, that's, yeah. but that's incredible, right? That's yeah. an incredible way to do it. So you already you already knew at least the songs, <laughs> at sure. least a lot of the songs. For sure, yeah. You did perform with him though, right? Fenway Park? Oh my gosh, yeah. Can we talk about that? We because can talk I can't, about it. <laughs> even gives me chills and I wasn't even there. <laughs> it was nuts. I mean, Boston people love Neil Diamond and they sing Sweet Caroline at every single Red Sox game. And when Neil was in town, they asked him if he'd go, and he was like, yeah, bring the cast. And so we showed up and we sang Sweet Caroline with Neil at Fenway. It was incredible. Touching me, touching you, sweet Caroline. So 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 Why do they do that? Why is that the song that they've chosen? Do you know? I, I, I think, don't know I mean, the there's history. a few different versions of the story. They, I think they started playing it and then they started winning when they played it. So they thought it was good luck. And then Neil came and sang after the uh, marathon bombing in Boston. He came and, and sang again to sort of cheer up the town and, uh, and they loved it. So they love him. And now that's just a staple of the games. 
So for you, uh, standing there with him and uh, and performing that song, is there anything you've learned about him now that you're actually knowing the person, not just you know him as a? Yeah, just that it's in his bones. Just like the minute they they pushed play on the on the track to to start singing, he was just he just like stepped in, which is like where it began. He just you just saw like all oh, the years of him singing that song and understanding how to work a crowd. It was just kind of awesome to watch him step into that that spotlight. Do you feel like you're doing that? You're you're doing that every time you you rehearse or every time you're there. But I mean, try to bring that that part of it. Cause that's I hope a... so. I hope that's the challenge. I guess, but um. But yeah, I mean, trying to trying to emulate him and, and bring his energy and his his sound and his passion is is the challenge. But hopefully, I'm getting it down. I love seeing uh, so many of these shows now on on Broadway um, with about real people. You know, whether you were talking about you know wh whoever it is, um, there've been so many. You know, obviously, MJ the Musical most most recent. But I think there's something special about that. I don't know if it's something that we need right now. I don't know if it's because um, we we need to have that. You know, those songs. It's, music changes us obviously we know yeah. that it brings us back and it, it moves us forward do you think that that's why that has become so so popular on broadway it could be i mean they're inspiring stories of success neil's is in particular really inspiring and he wrote so many joyous songs and that's certainly in short supply these days so mm -hmm. i think people are thrilled to come and and have that nostalgia of of all the joyous moments that those songs have been associated with them throughout their lives and then our stories told in a really artful moving way um to to kind of understand what Neil went through and and uh, and how he came out on top and that's inspiring as well. I feel like you've moved from one project to another to another. You had a few months to, to rest, I right? I hope so, I hope. <laughs> how's, your, how's your lovely wife? She's great. She's busier than I am. <laughs> yes. What, what is she working on? Are you working on anything uh, together? She's shooting that HBO show, The, the Gilded Age. Mm -hmm. They're shooting the second season Wonderful. of that right now, yeah. Netflix, you've had a lot going on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what is that experience versus the stage? I mean, those are two very different, uh, you know, yeah, man, to be an actor and to do those two different things, it feels like different universes. It's it's so different. It's a much more technical kind of version of, of the craft. You don't get to tell the story in line, and but you can, you know, you have, there's a lot more special effects to be able to tell crazier stories, and um, it's fun. It's just different. It's 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 a ball, but it's it, I, I think of it as math for actors. A Beautiful Noise starts performances in November. And by the way, joining Will on the Broadway scene this fall is his wife, the great six-time Tony Award winner, Audra McDonald. Under the direction of Kenny Leon, McDonald is headlining Ohio State Murders. It's a dark mystery that also marks the Broadway debut of its playwright, 90-year-old Adrian Kennedy. There's still a whole lot more to talk about on this edition of The Broadway Show. Coming up, you've seen them in huge films like In the Heights, Candyman, and the new Matrix movie. Now, they're soon to be the top dogs of Broadway. We're hanging out with the stars of Top Dog Underdog in just a few. This is a Broadway show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. K-pop brings the sounds of the South Korean pop musical phenomenon to Broadway. It's an electrifying production that will mark the Broadway debut of a real K-pop chart topper, Luna. Let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. That's right, Tamsin. I got to chat with Luna here at the Civilian Hotel about her exciting Broadway arrival. So Luna, thank you so much for being here. And I know you're here with your interpreter, Sanjay, who is the associate director. But it's worth noting that audiences do not have to know Korean to see the show K-pop and to appreciate it. Who better to have be the star of this show than you, Luna? You have been immersed in that world for so long. Talk about what kind of insights you plan on bringing to this new role. I think K-pop's world is very so to me, the world of K-pop is about the dreams of young artists and young people. K-pop is not just a monolith. K-pop is a collection of diverse voices, diverse artists, and diverse genres all within the world of K-pop. So when I would love for the audiences when they come to this show to see the dreams of young artists like played out on stage. I hope that they see the happiness and the anticipation um, and the positive energy that these artists will bring. For those who are new to the genre of K-pop, who have never really immersed themselves in it, what do you hope they get out of going to attend the show? What do you hope they learn about just the culture and about the music? 
어, 나도 할수 있겠는데? 이게 뭔가 그냥 easy하다는 느낌보다는 K-pop is so easy to sing along to. When, when you watch K-pop happen, you get the sense, oh, I could do it too. And I don't mean that it's easy. I just mean that it's accessible to everyone. And so when I, I want the audience to really easily access K-pop through our show. And I think that's part of why K-pop is such a worldwide phenomenon, because it's accessible. So rather than learn something from our show, I hope the audience can enjoy it, have fun, party with us. The choreography of our show is really amazing. So I hope you go home and like try out some dance moves that you see in the show. <laughs> So back in 2009, I know that you were the lead singer of FX and you guys really helped with the crossover, bringing K-pop into the United States. Is there anything you learned from that process that you plan on bringing to the stage? So FX, we always had a lot of fans like worldwide. We were never just popular in Korea. And from the beginning, we worked with a lot of Western composers. And so I think that meeting global audiences was never awkward for us. So I've thought a lot about how K-pop can be accessible to American audiences. And that is my expertise. So I hope that I can really lead the show um, so that American audiences can enjoy it and have fun with us. How are you going about preparing for that starring role? Oh, yeah, good question. Thank you. Um. So I'm aware that I have a lot of responsibility in representing that. So for me, in preparing for this main role, um, what's important to me is building trust between me and the audience and building trust between me and the cast and the whole team. I would love for the audience to want, through this show, want to listen to more K-pop, want to know more of Korean culture. And if there are any negative perceptions that they have already, I hope that I can help encourage curiosity. Um, I hope that I can bring joy, and I hope that like audiences can really have fun in, in the world of K-pop. For those who are huge Luna fans from back in your FX days, what do you hope they get out of this show and being able to see you um, perform in a different way? My fans love seeing me sing, love seeing me laugh, love seeing me run around on stage, and they love seeing me dance. I have not had many opportunities to show off my dancing skills, but my original dream was actually to be a dancer. A musical favorite about the signing of the Declaration of Independence is coming back to Broadway with a twist. Tony-winning director Diane Paulus is staging this new 1776, featuring a cast of female, non-binary, and trans performers. It's on stage in September, and we'll be back with more of the Broadway show in just a few. Welcome back to the Broadway show, and let's get back to it. Hamilton in a strange loop. Both won the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for Drama, and this fall, there are five other Pulitzer-winning plays coming to the boards. They are Between Riverside and Crazy, Cost of Living, Death of a Salesman, The Piano Lesson, and 20 Years After Winning the Pulitzer and Debuting on Broadway. It's a much-anticipated revival of Top Dog Underdog. Let's check back in with Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. Top Dog Underdog introduces audiences to acutely named brothers Lincoln and Booth. I sat down with stars Yahya Abdul-Mateen II and Corey Hawkins to find out more. Welcome, gentlemen. It's so good to see you both. You know, I, I have to say, I kind of feel like my pandemic streaming is coming to life here because you two both have been really busy. Corey, we've seen you in In the Heights, Black Klansman, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and Yaya, Candyman, The Matrix, Watchmen. Welcome to Broadway. I'm so thrilled you're together on Broadway in this amazing play. And yeah. this play is back. Yeah. This is the first revival of this play. And I feel like yeah. uh, the minute I heard it, I thought, yes, that's a play I need to see again. Yeah. Did either of you know this play going in or? 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we both were very familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, there's just certain plays that, that, that speak to you, speak your language, mm -hmm. um, yeah. that you just immediately, organically uh, get. And uh, yeah. that's so rare, I think, yeah. for, for a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. um, and so, especially, the black community, it's, it's just great to sort of honor that and honor Susan Lloyd Park's words, you know? Um, it's special. It's the first piece of material that I read where the characters spoke like me, you know, where I, where I related to them. I was saying earlier, I, um, I used to love Shakespeare because I found freedom in hiding behind the language. 
So the language felt like mask work so I could be as uh, expressive as I wanted to be. Contemporary plays used to give me some issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I found this play and I said, oh my God, they talk like I talk. They, 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 I know these people. And I found so much freedom uh, in that. So, uh, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, 15 years later to be, you know, doing this on Broadway, uh, it's, it's, it's literally a dream. Corey, you're playing Lincoln. I am. Yeah, yeah, you're playing Booth, your brothers mm -hmm. in the show. Yeah. There's so much great movies and TV and plays about amazing dynamics between brothers. And these two, mm -hmm. yeah. are, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's revealed very early on. Our father named us Lincoln and Booth. It was his idea of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that just really sets up everything else that goes on in their lives. I mean, the humor, the turmoil you know, mm -hmm. between the two of them. And then, you know, they grow up and they're trying to survive and they're trying to find love. It's raw, man, because because we all have those familial familial relationships, right? Yeah. We all know whether it's a sister, a cousin, a father, a mother, a brother, what, whatever that, aunt, uncles, you know, there's something about those struggles because you know each other so well mm -hmm. and you love each other so much that, you know, you laugh through the pain, and, the, and but you also, you know, so it just continues to evolve, man. It's something, it's the reason why these stories continue to be. Also, the Game of Three Card Monte is a big part of this yeah. Yeah. Uh, because Lincoln is retired and, and, and Booth is learning, maybe not as good as, as Lincoln is at it. Right? Don't tell him that, though. I like to brag I'm old enough that I actually got taken by a Three Card Monte guy in Times Square. Really? When I came to New York as a teenager. No so, doubt. like, I know all about, I know all oh, about yeah. this game. Wow. And you, you actually sort of play it on stage. You have to, that's part of, the, part of the rehearsal, right? It is. It is. It's, 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 a, it's a, and we have to learn it and understand the game. And, and, and that's a whole world in and of itself that is, uh, when we talk about secrets and the secrets mm -hmm. that we keep from each other and how much you know, Lincoln shares about that game with his brother mm -hmm. and what he knows that secret can do, you know, if he really learned what that game is about. Mm -hmm. If the audience really knew what this sleight of play, uh, sleight of hand is, that is the play, top dog, underdog, it's a sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it really is. And, and, and you don't literally until the last seconds of these of this play, you, you, you're kind of guessing you're literally doing that you mm -hmm. you you just like when you're watching three card money you're literally going like this like am i am i seeing what i think i see in my mm -hmm. doubting yourself and you know so it's recalibrating man it's such a interesting experience it's a very funny play yeah it's a very dramatic play yeah. it seems like it's going to be quite a roller coaster yeah, yeah. to ride be. every night it should be yeah, yeah. you ready for that is okay. the audience ready for right, it, right. The audience <laughs> ready. Yeah. we gotta we gotta come either way you right know? right right you know it, it just it runs the gamut man like you start one place but you end in a completely it, it, you, you sort of the the span of human emotion man mm -hmm. um and i know that it's going to be different every night i yeah. know that it's going to deepen every night i know mm -hmm. you know i trust that i feel that we could come in the room and just do you know what we do and it could be good or do as kenny and and slp challenges us and, and go deeper and find the messy parts and the raw parts and live in that and make it great Mm -hmm. And that's our challenge. That's our challenge to ourselves, mm -hmm. challenge to the audiences that are going to come see Top Dog Underdog. And it's going to be a ride, I think. Some of this season's offerings have already proven to be hits with audiences and critics prior to bowing on Broadway. Direct from the public theater, the comedy Ain't No Mo promises a high octane look at the turbulent skies of being black in today's America. While well, another off-Broadway success, the acclaimed musical Kimberly Akimbo, tells the unlikely story of a Jersey teen who happens to look like a 72-year-old woman. And finally, two big play hits from London. Tom Stoppard's Leopoldstadt is an epic that follows a Jewish family across 50 years of the 20th century, while The Collaboration looks at the close companionship between iconic pop artists Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat and stars Paul Bettany and Jeremy Pope. We've got more inside scoop on the fall season coming up on the Broadway show back in just a sec. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Tamsin Fidel.
Another big show just announced for the fall, it's the new play from stage and screen legend Gabriel Byrne. It's Walking with Ghosts. Byrne's one-man show, adapted from his memoir of the same name performances, begin October 18th at the Music Box. That's going to do it for us, but until next time, check out the Broadway show Uncut wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.